be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever. There is one body and one spirit. There is one, Lord. one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably upon your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. People of St. Paul's Episcopal Church, you have reflected on your ministry and discerned your choice for a new rector. We have, we have chosen, chosen and called Pastor Felicia smith Radio to be our rector. rector. And she has accepted. I commend your choice and affirm this call. Felicia, Presbyter in the Church of God, you have been called to work together with your bishop and your fellow presbyters as a pastor, priest, and teacher, and to take your share in the councils of the church. Now, in accordance with the canons, you have been selected to serve God in St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Fort Collins, Colorado. This letter is a sign that you are fully empowered and authorized to exercise this ministry, accepting its privileges and responsibilities as a priest of this diocese in communion with your bishop. Having committed yourself to this work, do not forget the trust of those who have chosen you. Care alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. By your words and in your life, proclaim the gospel. Love and serve Christ's people. Nourish them and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you grace and power to perform them. Given under my hand and seal in the city of Fort Collins on the third day of July in the year 2022, the fourth year of my consecration. <laughs> Are you, the people of St. Paul's Episcopal Church, ready to continue in your ministry with Pastor Felicia Smith Graybill as your priest. We are. <laughs> I will shout. <laughs> Pastor Felicia, all of creation is God's living word. Join us in our ministry of wonder, praise, and thanksgiving as we wander in the natural world, observing the threads of holiness and mystery present in every living thing. Amen. Let us gaze with our hearts, the eyes of our hearts on this wild world, God's big book teaching us who God is. Pastor Felicia, with this gospel, we proclaim and hear the living word of God. Join us in this ministry of telling the story of God's salvation. Amen. In this, God's little book of the good news of salvation, let us hear once again the story that saves our lives. From Second Kings. 
Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Armon, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to, Ar to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he could cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, when this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you might cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he might learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought for me, he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abanan and Parfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage. But his servants approached, to him, approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you have not done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the man of the word, to the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. 
whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this time that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. To the honor and glory of God, who by the word and through the spirit creates, redeems, and sanctifies us all. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. For those of you I have not had an opportunity to introduce myself to, my name is Kim Lucas, and it is my honor and my joy to serve as Bishop of the Episcopal Church in Colorado. And it is good to be back with the people of St. Paul's Episcopal Church. You guys are one of the few I got to see in person before our life was turned upside down by COVID. And it is good to be back here with you and it is good to be back here celebrating the ministry that you have claimed, uh, claiming Felicia Smith Graybill as your priest and pastor and rector. It is a joy to be here. Yay. Now I know uh, we, we share time and space, and so I promise, Felicia, I would keep it blessedly short. So turn on your stopwatch now. <clears throat> because I want to speak a little bit about what our lives are and our tendency not to believe what Jesus says. And, and it's true. I mean, Jesus says a lot of stuff. Some of it we like. Some of it is really hard, and we go, he didn't really mean that, did he? Did he, did he really mean, you know, selling everything and giving the money to the, he didn't mean that part. No. But Jesus says a lot of stuff, and, and the more I, I, I journey on this faith journey, the more I recognize what we don't believe in what Jesus says. Now, having been an Episcopalian nearly my whole life, having served in ordained ministry over half my life, I am convinced that no Episcopalian believes these words. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. For the last 26 years of my ordained ministry, the church has been declining. The Episcopal Church has been called the incredible shrinking church. We are losing members decade after decade and lots of people sit around and wring their hands and they're saying, people are leaving. How do we get them to come back? Maybe they don't come back. 
But that's okay because you know what? The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is plentiful. What we know about folks in the great wide world right now is that according to recent studies, lots of people think that Jesus is an important religious figure in the world. Which is why I don't want another Episcopalian to tell me I talk too much about Jesus. <laughs> we haven't been talking about Jesus enough. The harvest is plentiful because there are people out in the wild world who have been wounded by church, who have been disappointed, who have been crushed, who have seen in our church ranks such division and hypocrisy, such judgment that they walk away. The harvest is plentiful because there are people out there who are hungry for a word of good news. They don't care about our institution. They don't care about how much money we need. They don't care about who we need to volunteer to do our jobs. What they want, what they need from us who have a relationship with this guy, Jesus, is a word of hope, is a word of good news, a word of blessing. People want to know that they are loved, that they are valuable, that they have worth in this world. They want to know that there is purpose in our life, that we don't just do this grind day after day and after day and, and live into that adage, life sucks and then you die. Because we who have known Jesus have known something of the love of the divine. We who have known Jesus have known the Holy Spirit manifest in community. We who have known Jesus have known that we can endure despair and loss. We know that we can endure hardship and our brokenness because Christ is with us, redeeming us, healing us, reconciling us every minute of every day. We who have known the love of God through Jesus Christ have a gift more powerful than anything this world can offer. And we are called to share that over there and out there and way over there. We are called to bring that good news to be manifest in every aspect of our life. What we do on this day should nourish and empower us to go into the world proclaiming the kingdom of God has come near to us. I don't know if you get as depressed as I do watching the new news cycle. I have committed myself to only one time a day. It's not good for my spirit to do more than that, but I, I see the news and I see that there's this, this desire in some to turn back our clock on our progress, that somehow we need to go back to this old way of being. But as a person of faith, I know there is no back. There never is back. For us who follow Jesus, we can only move forward. Forward in love, forward in faith, forward. And for those of us who are called to this life by virtue of our baptismal covenant, we have to commit to recognizing that we have to walk in peace even if that peace isn't returned to us. And peace is not capitulation. Peace is not resignation. Peace is not abandoning our hope to the status quo. No, peace the shalom that Jesus talks about is a confidence that when we live the way Jesus calls us to live, we are doing the transforming work of the gospel. Peace is about proclaiming to a broken world 
the healing power of Christ. Peace is about living in our very being in every aspect of our life. This call to love one another as Christ loved us, even when the other is not particularly lovable. Our peace is about praying for one another, praying for the brokenness of this world, praying for shifts in hearts and minds so that we would have a nation that cared as much about keeping guns out of our schools as it cares about controlling women's bodies. Peace is about committing ourselves over and over again to the hard work of reconciling this world to God, and reconciling all of us one to another. The good news for us is we don't have to do this by ourselves. The good news is Christ has promised to be with us always, always. The good news is Christ calls us into community so that we might support, encourage, embolden, empower one another to live this life. The good news is that we are given to one another by virtue of our baptismal covenant to be for one another the bulwark against the despair and the negativity of this world. The harvest is plentiful. There are people all around Fort Collins who need to hear that good news. I pray that you come with me, that you walk with me, that you boldly proclaim this faith that we have been given. Because I believe Episcopalians, no matter how few of us there are, if we're willing to live our baptismal covenant, we can change the world. Amen. Pastor Felicia, people of St. Paul's, in holy baptism, we receive full adoption through God's grace and full empowerment for ministry through the Holy Spirit. Will you work together as partners in the mission of the church to reconcile all people to God through Christ? The water of baptism signifies our eternal covenant with God. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to Christ, we bring into this fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We pray you, God, to sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that all who are in baptism cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Let us renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in God's holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the cross of Christ, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, 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 the Holy
in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sin and called us to ministry in Jesus Christ, keep us in eternal life by his grace, through Christ our Lord. St. Paul's has been led by the Holy Spirit to be in a spirit-driven partnership with our faith communities at 301 East Stewart. Our mission, 301 Faith Partners is an inclusive community dedicated to be more and do more together while respecting individual gifts and traditions. We welcome all people and offer a spiritual refuge with opportunities for individual and collective growth. We commit to work for social justice and to protect all creation.
trying to vote. <laughs> Take care. All right. Let this image remind you of your place in the web of all creation. May it also be a symbol of our partnership as servants of God and of communities and the 301 Faith Partnership. Amen. Let us join together in proclaiming God's love and in equipping our people for ministry. Thank you. Pastor Felicia, you are Christ's hands and feet in the world, comforting, reconciling, and anointing those who have need of pastoral care. Join us in our work of prayer and healing. Amen. In the spirit of God, who searches the heart and knows our deepest needs, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who yearn for Christ's healing. prayers of the people. Those who are joining us on Zoom, please put your prayers in the chat box. God of creation, master of the universe, we have in our baptismal covenant affirmed that we belong to you. Grant us your peace. Help us to keep the promises we have made. Our promise to care for one another and for the earth. Our promise to renounce evil our promise to learn and grow in knowledge and love of you, and our promise to strive for justice, peace, and the dignity of all human beings. Inspire and protect the world's leaders that they may faithfully serve the people of the lands they govern move in the hearts of all clergy and church leaders that they may serve you in the unique ways in which they are called for our presiding bishop michael for our bishop kim for our priest felicia and for deacon nancy we pray prayers for healing for michelle dana Clarence, Charles, and Terry. Special intentions. Pray for Bernal and Cruz family who lost two beloved people last week. For Nick and Kelly. Prayers of thanks and love and congratulations for Felicia. Prayers of celebration for the 301 Faith Partnership. Healing for Art Thompson. Thanksgiving for Joe's successful surgery. Prayers and thanksgiving for Pastor Felicia's ministry at St. Paul's. Thanksgiving and good results for Irma's procedure. Comfort and heal all who are ill, sorrowing or broken. Free all who are in bondage. Bring peace to the world and healing to the planet's ecosystems. Our Christ, you have shown us the way through death into eternal life. Bring all who have died into the joy of seeing you face to face and being with you always. Now staying where you are, we invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. Please be seated. Jackie and Tim, where are you? Behind, there you are. Pastor Felicia, Felicia, we have yeah. shared the bread and the cup. We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Join us at God's table to offer and bless our gifts of bread and wine. Amen. Together, let us keep the feast. I invite you to stand in body or spirit as together we pray. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places. Our true and loving God through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings in all creation as we shout with joy. Holy, holy, holy holy Lord, Lord, God God of of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. (laughs) 
after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts which your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with all of your saints that have gone before and all of your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the priests. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Behold who you are. Become what you receive.
Please join me in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. We have celebrated this new pastoral relationship in the great prayer of the church. Felicia, I commend to your love and care the people of St. Paul's Episcopal Church. My brothers, sisters, and siblings in Christ, I commend to your love and care your new rector, colleague, and friend, the Reverend Felicia Smith Grabiel. Receive this blessing. Friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel this pilgrim way with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind. Forgive again and again, and rejoice always in the power of God's grace and mercy. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Holy Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.